What's going on everyone? Aaron again and welcome back to the Happy Hydro YouTube channel. This week what I got on deck for you is a par testing and a review of the Chilled Tech X6 600 watt light. Let's go get into it. Hey guys, so this is a little longer of a video because we're going over both versions of the X6 600 watt LED light by Chilled Tech. This American made workhorse is assembled right here in the USA and it's a high performance LED that plants love. But before we get to this point, we have to take it back to where it all starts. There are two versions of this light. There's a pre-assembled plug and play and there's also a DIY do-it-yourself version. So if you're one of those that like to do it yourself, this is perfect for you. First, we're gonna start with the pre-assembled version. The pre-assembled version of the light does come in two boxes with the smaller box containing everything you need to get this light up and running. Let's take a look inside. The first bag that I find contains the four ratcheting straps you need to help hang the light at varying heights. It also has an external dimmer pot. This is useful in dialing in your light to anywhere between 5% and 100% max capacity. It also comes with a seven foot push lock driver extension cable. a six and a half foot push lock AC cord, also a pretty cool sticker. Finally, the brains of the operation. Inside this box, we have the push lock Meanwell HLG 600H 48B LED driver. It is an external driver. The dimensions of the X6 are 42.5 by 42.5 and it has an incredibly slim profile of just 1.375 inches. It weighs just around 33 pounds. As you see here, the rugged T-slot bar allows for the maximum area of heat dissipation with its passive cooling linear design. The total PPFD output is 1647 micromoles per second and has a system efficacy of 2.81 micromoles per joule in a 600 watt draw. The X6 is a 6 bar styled light. Each of these bars contain 140 Samsung 3000K white LEDs, 140 Samsung 5000K white LEDs, and 16 660 nanometer deep red LEDs. Before we get to see this bad boy in action, we're going to go check on the DIY crowd. The DIY shipping box does look a little different, but don't worry, it's still got all the fixings. Let's go take a look inside. You'll find a smaller box that houses the external driver and a slightly larger box that contains all the accessories to get the assembly underway. then have to unbox the main support bars and finally the light bars. Our friends over at Chilled Tech allowed us to borrow their incredible DIY video. 
if you have the assembled version, you can go ahead and skip, but if you have the DIY version, I would recommend giving this a look-see. With your purchase, you should have received a pair of Torx bits, one being a 210 and the other being a T20. What is not included is a quarter inch screwdriver, needle nose pliers, wire stripping tool, and a paper clip. First, take the power board and slide it into the U-frame, making sure the power cord and screw holes line up. Place your light bars between the two U-frames and make sure to line up the screw holes that correspond with the kit that you have. Before you secure your light strips, make sure that the connector terminals for each light bar line up on the side of the frame with the power board. Once your light strips are staged uniformly, secure them to the U-frame. Take your wire strippers and strip about 8 millimeters of insulation off, then measure how much wire you will need to connect the light strip to the power board before cutting and stripping the other end. Next, insert the wire into the light strip connector, followed by threading it through the appropriate hole in the U-frame, and over to the connector on the power board. Make sure the wire each light strip to the power board with both positive and negative wires. Next step requires taking the strain relief cable gland and separating it into its four components. Slide the 48 volt power cable through the coil, followed by the threaded insert before pulling the cable through the opening in the U-frame. Then insert the washer and nut onto the other side of the power board and tighten the threaded insert until snug. Now insert the 48 volt wires into the correct connector terminal remembering that the white is your positive and the black is your negative. If you need to remove these cables from the connector, be sure to pull along the power board and not upward or outward. Twisting the wires while pulling can also help in removing them from the connector. Finally, secure the coil to lock the 48 volt cable in place. Once all the connectors have been wired in your kit, slide the cover and secure it to the U-frame. Then secure the PCB covers and attach your hooks to the four hook points on the frame. Next, you'll be wiring the driver. Each Growcraft order comes with a mean well driver to power your light and will be wired similarly even with different wattage drivers. To wire your driver correctly, first identify the input end of the driver which connects to a standard 120 volt wall outlet and the output end which connects to your Growcraft. Important, do not wire and plug in your input to a power outlet until you've concluded the wiring to the Growcraft and are ready to turn on. Additionally, any unused wires should be covered by Owego connectors to protect you from electric shock. Locate the black and red cable on the output end of the driver and connect it to the 48 volt cable that should already have been connected to the Growcraft power board. Making sure the negative wires match one connector and the positive red and white wires connect to another connector. Next, take the cable level dimmer switch, should be blue and white, connect the positive blue driver wire to the red positive dimmer wire to one connector and the negative black and negative white wire to a separate connector. Now you're ready to set up the engine. Using three Wago connectors, match the colors of the wires, yellow green to yellow green, blue to blue, and brownish red to brownish red. And that's it, you're ready to go. Wow, that was easy. Now that the DIYers have cut up, it's time to get my little dimmer switch and see what we're working with. We recommend using this light in a 4x4 or 5x5 area for the best results. This light also has to be hung with at least 6 inches of clearance above so that the passive cooling is properly working. We are doing a part test on the pre-assembled light, still using the Apogee MQ620 because it does have the capability to read a wider range of light. Here's a quick look of the posted PAR mapping that Chilled Tech provided us. We have this light in a 4x4 tent and hung at 12 inches from the PAR reader. In the center of the tent, we get a reading of 1587 micromoles per second. On the outside, it's a reading of just around 1370 micromoles per second. And finally, in the corners, we get a reading of 1072 micromoles per second. I was also able to get my hands on this little gadget so we can see in real time what the readings are at the outlet. So it's a 120 volt outlet. You can see here after we plug it in, we 
we are reading just around 116 volts. With the light plugged in at 100%, we are seeing 5.1 amps and 598 watts. Thank you guys so much for watching again. Next week, we're gonna have a different video for you, but until then, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the Happy Hydro YouTube channel so you can stay in the loop, and don't forget to comment down below anything that you wanna see done in the future. But until then, stay happy, friends.